On June 26th, the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling present Forbidden Door. Chicago de 新日本プロレスと AEW の合同興行が決まったと聞いたときはワクワクしましたね。ええ、まあどういう相手と戦うのかわからなかったです。Two of pro wrestling's biggest powerhouses coming together to give you an event like you've never. Seen before. The idea of Forbidden Door finally coming to reality is a dream come true. Kind of how you would look at fantasy football or fantasy baseball. That's what this is. It's fantasy wrestling. You're having some of the biggest stars in New Japan Pro Wrestling colliding against some of the biggest stars in AEW. It's dream matches. This is an event that really is、uh, going to be one of the most talked about events in pro wrestling, not only for the remainder of this year, once it happens, I think for decades and years to come. These are hardcore wrestling fans who understand just how big of a deal it is to have Tanahashi on the show, to have Zack Saber Jr. on the show, to have Minoru Suzuki on the show, teaming with Chris Jericho for the very first time. And once again, the catalyst of professional wrestling is making things happen. So, fans, wrestlers alike, I hope you know who to direct your thank yous towards. AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling proudly presents Countdown to Forbidden Door. Hiroshi Tanahashi is a once-a-century athlete. That's not just a moniker or a catchphrase. It's reality. He's a rock star. He's like wrestling royalty. Tanahashi, when he comes to the United States, is as big as the Beatles. Is as big as the Rolling Stones. Tanahashi is not only one of the great stars in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but he's a movie star and he's a big-time personality in Japan. The once-in-a-generation athlete, the once-in-a-century athlete, the ace of the universe. The simplest way I can explain Hiroshi Tanahashi to a fan that may have never seen him wrestle before is that he's the Japanese Bret Hart. He's so technically pure that he rarely makes a mistake. Tanahashi is a major draw throughout the world as a professional wrestler. He has excellent size, excellent athleticism. He is on the doorstep of championship glory. Is Tanahashi tough enough to withstand the barrage that will be brought onto him by John Moxley? When the dust settles at Forbidden Door, you are gonna call me Ace. The tour of the islands. Tour of the islands. Jeff Cobb is the legal man. Two. We've got new tag team champions. Just the thought of a winner-take-all tag team match, a three-way match for two separate championships. One team is gonna walk away, both as the ROH World Tag Team Champions and the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Two of the most prestigious championships in tag team wrestling. Roppongi Vice is a tag team that is very, very highly decorated in New Japan Pro Wrestling. They have what it takes to be crowned new champions at Forbidden Door. Jeff Cobb and the Great Okan, power personified, the immovable force in this match. The hottest team in wrestling right now is FTR. I don't care what anybody says, and they're always seemingly challenged to prove it. Well, this is a great prove it match. Two weeks before Forbidden Door at Dominion in Osaka, Jay White defeated Kazuchika Okada for that IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. People call him the greatest. What a 4-1 singles record against myself, and this right now says that I am the greatest. 新日本プロレスと AEW の合同興行、やっぱりさ、岡田和志がいないと始まらないでしょ。So Okada said that there's no point in the Forbidden Door if he's not there. Well, him. The prestige, the honor. Of becoming the IWGP champion would mean the world to a guy like me. When you put four men in the ring, the caliber of Switchblade Jay White, Adam Cole, former AEW World Champion, the Great Champion Hangman Adam Page, and Okada, divide for the IWGP Heavyweight Title. Many people are calling this a dream match. As you can see, I 
am the leader of Bullet Club. I am the catalyst of professional wrestling. And now I am the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. This is the Switchblade era. We have been there before. We've heard Jay White time and time again sing his own praises. And unfortunately, most of the time, he's right. Stepping into the ring with a guy like Jay White, a guy like Okada, a guy like Hangman Adam Page. I mean, this match just screams big match. It, it screams importance. It's, it's honestly what Forbidden Door is really all about. For me, finally being able to see Okada in the ring in the AEW ring, that's great stuff, man. I am the best wrestler. More in the show. Mm. Okada's comments, I think, speaks to the confidence of Okada. He knows his place in professional wrestling. And Okada, sometimes a little humble, but also at the same time, almost arrogant in his belief that he is the man in professional wrestling. You say it's been thrown into the fire to be put in a four way match against Kazuchika Okada, Hangman Adam Page. Adam Cole, I just call it another day in the life of the champion, another day in the life of Switchblade Jay White. You see, in my short yet illustrious career, all I do is break records and write history. And what better way for me to write more history than beating those three in the same night at a sold out forbidden door, thanks to the Switchblade. When I was in New Japan Pro Wrestling, I was nowhere close to winning the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Now I think I'm good enough. So what would it mean? It would mean that uh, all those years in New Japan weren't wasted, all these years in AEW weren't wasted if I set my mind to something like I did with the AEW World Championship. I'll do it. America no fan of everyone. These four-way championship matches are such a unique situation. And to have a prize like the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship decided when the champion may not even have to be pinned or submitted in order for the title to change hands, it's a very unique set of circumstances. And to have four elite level wrestlers, four of the best wrestlers in the world competing in the same match, it is a powder kick. Four guys in their prime, four guys at their absolute best fighting for one of the richest prizes in professional wrestling. It's gonna be special. It's gonna be a match that people will not soon forget and it's gonna be what Forbidden Door is all about. To hold that championship would be quite the feather in my cowboy hat. It would mean the world to me. It would, it would, I think, make my time in New Japan Pro Wrestling, looking back on it, seem more worthwhile, more that it accumulated to something if I were able to win that championship. And will I win it? I told you I would win the AEW World Championship, and I did. I'll do the same for this one. I will make it rain in the United Center. United Center! This match, for my legacy to me, it doesn't mean anything, but I know in the fans' eyes, it's gonna be Switchblade Jay White beating three of their favorites, three of the best in the world. But let me set the record straight. They're not the best, because they're not Jay White. I am. When Kenny Omega left New Japan Pro Wrestling to join AEW, he essentially passed the torch to two men, Jay White and Will Ospreay. He said, you represent the rest of the world in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh my God, that's Will Ospreay, the leader of the United Empire. Will Ospreay knows how great Will Ospreay is, but nobody gives him the credit that he thinks he's due. Fans are rejoicing for the arrival of this talented Brit. The Will Ospreay that we see before us today is a man that feels like he has enemies at all sides, that he has this united empire and no one else. 
and wait, inside the ring! That's Aaron Hanare! And Aussie Open also! Osprey bringing in the reinforcements! And Aussie Open, one of the greatest tag teams of the last five years! He's gonna come into this match at Forbidden Door with a point to prove, and he's gonna try to prove that point at the expense of Orange Cassidy. Anytime Orange Cassidy steps in the ring, it is an interesting styles clash with his opponent. And it's going to be no different when he steps into the ring against Will Ospreay. Great ovation for Orange. Orange Cassidy has returned to the ring, long-awaited return to the ring. It's impossible to say what is ever going through the mind of Orange Cassidy, but if this were me, if this were my first singles match back after months on the shelf with injury, I might be a little nervous. Though. We've seen throughout his AEW career, Orange Cassidy is not somebody to be taken lightly. And he's not somebody that's very easily bullied. Just ask Chris Jericho about that. I think this is gonna be an incredible one-on-one -on -one matchup. And this is really gonna be the tale of two styles of professional wrestling. You have the modern hybrid style of Will Ospreay where he so effortlessly combines power and high flying. And then you have the more cerebral but laconic style of Orange Cassidy. Yeah, this is why he's so popular, because he can do things like this. I don't want to say he's on fire, but he's smoldering. I think Will Ospreay is one of the best professional wrestlers walking the earth today, but he's somebody that's very volatile, somebody that's very highly emotional. Will Ospreay, the undisputed Revolution Pro British Heavyweight Champion, the IWGP United States Heavyweight Champion. I could see Orange Cassidy getting under his skin. I could see Orange Cassidy forcing Will Ospreay to make mistakes. And I think Orange Cassidy is gonna walk out of Forbidden Door the winner. And we could be looking at the next IWGP United States Heavyweight Champion in Orange Cassidy. FTR, I mean, we pretty much had them beat in Vegas. That's true. These two guys, monster dudes, Ocon and Cobb, come running down, and they start beating our ass for no reason. So now, we're kind of backed into a corner because we're against two different champions, and we don't got any belts. Hey, yeah, we kind of snuck our way in. Sneaky style our way into this match. You guys beat us up, and now we kind of got a shot at your belt, so... Uh... All Rapongi Vice. Don't sleep on Trent and Rocky. They're a team that has held the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship on multiple occasions. I like the Punky Vice. Those guys, uh, they've been doing this for a long time and they're good. They can go out there and they can kick ass. They can take names, they can do what they have to do. This is a chance for our AEW fans to learn what the Punky Vice is all about. That's right. <laughs> I'm not so sure that the great Okan and Jeff Cobb has, have a disadvantage having to go through Forbidden Door in their first title defense. And I say this because we've seen them in AEW. They made a shocking appearance. FTR, you know, I've seen your tweets, I've seen your comments talking about wanting to be belt collectors, collecting belts from here, from Mexico, from Ring of Honor. And now you want something from Japan. Now the only thing standing in your way is the great Okan and Jeff Cobb. At Dominion, Rocky, you wanted to jump in and try to attack us, and we laid you out. They have momentum to the new champions. Plus, I got Jeff Hobb, who's a superhuman. There's not a, he's not a pure wrestler in AEW that can manhandle Jeff Cobb, period, in a story, case closed. Well, I think what is going to separate these teams is the fact that FTR is so focused. For so long, the greatest wrestling of all time was considered to be in Japan. And if you wanted to be in the upper echelon of professional wrestling, you had to go make it in Japan. And the one championship that's eluded us is the IWGP Tag Team Championships. The passion to be the greatest tag team of all time goes through Forbidden Door. We have to win the IWGP Tag Team Championships to go down as the greatest tag team of all time. We are the best. So anybody else that thinks they are, step to us. I beg you. I need four. Come Forbidden Door, Rapungi Vice, Okan, Cobb, you're standing in the way of the legacy. See, we're not doing this. We're not winning the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions just for New Japan. No, no, no. We're not doing it for New Japan. We're doing it for the United Empire. We're both coming into this thing with something to prove. 
we got two separate championships on the line, and we're coming into this thing. We got nothing to lose, guys. All we can do is win. You're standing in the way of destiny, and destiny is for the greatest tag team of all time to go down as FTR, and that's us, and that's what we'll do. My history with Brian Danielson. What is this, a bedtime story? I wrestled Zack Sabre Jr. in a little bar in front of 45 people in like 2008. 14 years ago, Brian Danielson was the best wrestler in the world. And he wrestled a very young, inexperienced Zack Sabre Jr. This is gonna be a cakewalk. And it wasn't a cakewalk. And I thought, okay, if he, if he keeps training hard and if he can put on a little bit of muscle or whatever it is, he's, he's gonna be somebody to watch. And then when he broke through in New Japan, all of a sudden, like, his gears changed. And it was just a pleasure to watch because I'm somebody who loves, 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 loves technical wrestling. And he was doing stuff I'd never seen before. I've called his matches, very unique, very different. Long body, works with leverage. He's gonna beat with submissions. That's it! Or pins that you just cannot escape. Zack Sabre Jr. makes it seem so effortless in the ring. He has such a tremendous foundation of submission wrestling that that could make him dangerous against almost any opponent. But then you add his kicks, his strikes, his throws into that, and Zack Sabre Jr. is a, a professional wrestler that would give anyone else fits in the ring. American Dragon, you take some time out your busy golfing schedule with the Black Ball Country Club to find out who the best technical wrestler in the world is. But I'll tell you now, darling, it's in me. The bad news, I am not cleared to compete. I would like to see those medical records, because I think Brian's concerned about being outed as not the best technical wrestler in the world. You can say this about the entire Blackpool Combat Club. They have a lot of integrity. They don't back down. They don't lie to you. There's no doubt about it that it's a legit injury. I have found the one person I trust to take my place at Forbindor. The one person I know in the entire world who will take it to Zack Sabre Jr. from a technical level, and you are all going to be astounded by what he does in AEW. From day one, when Forbidden Door was announced, fans were speculating about who would be on the card. Now to have this mystery component added in, it just further increases those possibilities. It's an international event, so it could be someone here in the United States or someone that wrestles internationally. This lends to a surprise that we maybe not even have thought of before. Well, I'm here for Brian Danielson. It's a long flight from Japan, it's 15 hours. I could not give a flying toss about the mystery opponent. I should just go back to Japan. He's somebody that was coming into this event with a huge chip on his shoulder, and I think it's only gonna grow from here. So I'm gonna prove, without a doubt, that I'm the greatest technical wrestler in the world. I hate letting people down. Come Sunday, nobody's gonna be let down. We have a new AEW World Heavyweight Champion. His name is C. I think we all wanted to see Tanahashi take on CM Punk for the AEW World title, but then the injury to CM Punk was, was really devastating for, for a lot of us and for, for many fans. I'm champion for a reason, and I'm going to show you exactly why. I will come back bigger, faster, stronger, and hungrier than ever before. Punk's entry added a lot of intrigue because all of a sudden we don't have a healthy champion. It took the wind out of everybody's sails for just a little bit. But then with the Eliminator series, very quickly, we came into a realm where we're going to have an interim champion crown. The Forbidden Door, indeed, is wide open. You know Mox did this matchup for the AEW Interim Championship against one of the greatest of all time it has not been talked about enough. I honestly could give a shit about anybody else at Forbidden Door. I'm gonna go out there and do my job like I always do. My job of Forbidden Door is to dump Hiroshi Tanahashi right on top of his skull. My job of Forbidden Door is to choke the life out of Hiroshi Tanahashi. When you look at the wrestling resume of Hiroshi Tanahashi and John Moxley, it's pretty similar. They are multi-time champions around the world. They are men that have carried companies on their backs through very harsh, very lean times. その
僕が選ばれたっていうことは責任も感じてますしあのこの AEW でチャンピオンベルトを取って一旗あげてやろうと思ってます。After Moxley achieved success at Windy City Riot, he called out Hiroshi Tanahashi. He said Tanahashi has been ducking him for three years. It's more than just a match for the Interim World Title. It's a match between two guys who have been really on a collision course to face each other. I chased you across Japan on bullet trains. I chased you across the Pacific. It's always been about you, Tanahashi. For John Moxley and Hiroshi Tanahashi, to not just be gifted a main event spot, but to actually have to compete to fight their way into the top spot at one of the biggest pay-per-view events of the year, that's a pretty big deal. And that just shows that both of these men, and it's no secret, have the heart of a champion. I've been big game hunting in New Japan Pro Wrestling. I've been going after the biggest, the baddest, the most legendary names. Naito. Nagata, Suzuki, Ishii. I've been going after him on the biggest one, the last one that I wanted, that I've been looking for for two, three years. Tanahashi. But Moxley is Tanahashi. You were three years old for three years. I was running away from him. Tanahashi. モックスリーが予約をついたそういうことだと思います If Hiroshi Tanahashi becomes the AEW Interim World Champion He'll bring that belt back to Japan Which will immediately raise the specter of AEW in Japan Continuing its growth around the world 僕が AEW のベルトを取って AEW の禁断の扉を開くって言って僕が言った言葉なんですね。このフォービデンドアっていうのは、あの言った本人がやっぱキーを持ってて、でこの扉を開けるのは俺だと思ってますし、AEW のファンの方にはちょっと気の毒ですけども、AEW に初めて日本人のチャンピオンが生まれます。If there was no John Moxley as United States Champion, would we be having a forbidden door right now if I hadn't brought Yuji Nagata and Kenta and the United States Championship to Dynamite? You think we'd be having this pay-per-view right now? Everything that I've tried to forge myself into for three years to become, it is all on the line. And for you, your busted neck, your busted knees, your life, your health, everything that you are is on the line because Tanahashi, I play for keeps. If I wasn't the guy who bridged the gap over the Pacific between New Japan and AEW, you think we'd be having this conversation right now? I am the forbidden door. <laughs>